Hey guys, I recently picked up a Spintech conversion for my 2002 F350. And uh, what this does is it eliminates the unit bearing and replaces it with uh, serviceable Timken bearings. I'm gonna go through the installation. I already did the driver's side and uh, we'll be working on the passenger side today. We'll go through all the tools, all the equipment, everything needed to do the job. Um, when I first started doing the research, I was having a hard time finding all the information in one spot. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do for you guys. The first thing I ran into was what studs do I have? Uh, I looked on the internet and for 2002, it could either be coarse studs or the fine studs on uh, to secure the wheel. Um, I really couldn't find anything definitive as to which units or which rigs came with what studs. It seemed like kind of a just a crapshoot. Um, even looking on the old forums, I couldn't really find anything that really had it nailed down. So basically what you have to do is look up the, the lug nuts that you do have currently and order uh, correspondingly. Okay, so this is kind of how it works. Okay, so the shiny uh, lug nut is uh, 14 by 1.5 and the older one, this is uh, 14 by 2.00. Now, um, the 2.00 is, in fact, the coarse stud, and the 1.5 will be your fine stud. So, uh, I went ahead and ordered the fine stud uh, kit, and it was available, and uh, I got it uh, shipped out pretty quickly. Okay, so when you do get your uh, conversion kit, let's see you will get um, most of the stuff here you will not get the u-joint or uh, the tools um, i'll be doing the brakes on mine so i'm replacing the calipers and the rotors um, i will also replace the uh, u-joints and uh, some of the other stuff it does come with the mile marker lockable hub assembly and we'll talk about that too um, now the, the parts let's see we have the spindle over here and then the the hub now the hub comes sort of pre-assembled it does have the bearing uh, races already pressed into it so that makes it a little easier for you The spindle comes with the um, roller bearings already in. Let's see, then we have, they call this a V-lip seal. The V-lip seal will go over um, the surface right here on the hub with the lip pointed outward it's a stretch to fit kind of thing comes with these two seals um, the bigger one it's got a little bit of a chamfer to it uh, that's called a it's a plastic thrust washer and then this one let's see this is just a seal so part of the uh, inner spindle bearing kit, and I'll show you where that goes. So once you get to the point where you pack these uh, bearings with grease, you put a little grease on the inner lip of this seal, and then this just pops in here. You could do the same thing by loading it onto the axle stub. And then this guy here, See how it's got this bevel to it, this chamfer. Well, that's going to go toward the center of the vehicle. Okay. So if the wheel's out here and the stub axle comes through here, then this will install like that. 
here you have the 35 spline stub shaft. Okay. Now this kit comes with this seal here. This replaces the mudslinger. Um, according to the instructions, they uh, they've eliminated the mudslinger, which let's see if I can zoom in for you. Would go on the stub shaft um, and go up against the uh, the yoke itself. But it's being replaced by this little guy here. And how this goes on, it's kind of a press fit kind of thing where you can't do it with one hand, but it's going to press onto the surface here, the machine surface, and go all the way down against the yoke. So going to take the place of that mud slinger and it will be compressed I believe. Um, see how it, it's a flexible seal and once it's mounted it will push in against that and keep the uh, elements out of your your uh, stub shaft and the bearings. Okay and as far as these other parts go Let's see, let's talk about the bearings real quick. Okay, this is gonna be your outer. Of course, it's gonna go right there. And then after you get it, the bearings packed, then you install this seal over the back side of it. And what you can do is uh, get it started, tap it in with a small hammer, then uh, finish up with a block of wood to drive it in straight, unless you have, um, a seal press or something large enough to do it. Okay, then we have uh, what they call the spindle nut kit. So um, this would be the first one that you would put on. This is after it's fully assembled. You have your axles in place. Then this would go on first and see how it's got this little nub here. Okay, so that'll go on first. Then you're gonna follow it up torque it. We'll, we'll talk about all that on the install. Then you're going to go ahead and put this one on. And you see how it's got this cut out the spindle right here. This will ride down and then you'll drop it onto this little peg here and then you'll fit it together. And then you'll finally guy on here and it'll lock it all down um, so one of the challenges was getting the right socket I found this one at O'Reilly's and uh, so I suggest that you take the nut with you the four um, this little garland here and take it with you to uh, when you go shopping for a socket and make sure it fits appropriately. This one drops right on. This one also has a nice little rim around the outside to keep it um, kind of centered up and makes it a little easier, I think, to tighten it up. This one, like I said, I got it at O'Reilly's. Uh, it says two and a half inch. Um, so just take yours with you. Make sure you get the right one. There, there's a there's a bunch of them out there, and they don't all fit. So okay, these remaining parts are for installing the lockable hubs. Okay, so we'll go over this in a bit. You can take the hub and this little circ clip is used to uh, keep everything on the axle. And this guy here, this is reused. Um, this is the seal that keeps the dirt and everything. As far as the tools needed to do the job, you're gonna need some grease. Um, they specify high temperature bearing uh, grease for disc brakes. Uh, make sure you have some brake fluid. You're gonna need some sort of uh, 
lubricant to break the bolts loose that retain the hub assembly and also some brake cleaner clean things up I'm gonna be installing the brakes on my install so I'll be needing some uh, the brake quiet um, keep things from squeaking of course a little paint um, got a 19 millimeter and a, or excuse me a 17 millimeter and a 21 millimeter uh, 21s for the retaining bolts that hold the hub on also um, you're gonna need it for the brake caliper bracket and the 17 will be for the slide pins on the brakes and let's see torque wrench pry bar uh, ratchet all that sort of thing also get yourself some good sturdy jacks because these suckers are heavy all right let's get with it Not too long ago. Oh, where'd you you have a charger for it? Yeah. Where? In the garage somewhere. Oh shit, man. What did you need? What did you use the Makita for? Uh, my buddy gave me a, a light with it. Oh. With the uh, charger and the uh, and the battery pack. Well, shoot that. Uh, but the light doesn't. I don't think that thing holds a charge though. I oh, think the battery. Oh, well, that could very well be. So this has got like a little retaining oh, clip. Oh, I see. Here. Okay, a little bitty retainer. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can get that bad boy out. It's good, dude. Let's get it like a couple, couple seconds of it. And then we need to get these washers out. Really. Get into that clip. Yeah, this uh, this axle's seen a lot of action. So what you're doing is you're resting the ears of the yoke on your vise. This side is uh, free. Okay, you want to separate your main shaft from your stub shaft. So I'm going to hit right here on the yoke and uh, 
pop this guy out. Okay, so this is a Spicer 1480 joint. Um, I went ahead and got the greasable one, so I like the assurance and being able to do the maintenance on it. Um, so what we're gonna do right now is uh, just throw a little bit of grease in there and uh, assemble the joint. And remember, the, uh, the grease dirt is gonna go toward the center of the car. So it'll go in here like this and um, be facing down so that when you're servicing the vehicle you can get in there and pump some grease into it. studs were right here in the unit bearing and you're gonna have to break them loose and transfer them over to your new spindle set um, what that means is uh, it's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of cussing and <laughs> swearing and uh, it just is a very difficult job what you might want to do is just get some new ones um, it might save you some heartache and just uh, place them into the new spindle set. Okay, so this is the mudslinger. It comes with the Dodge kit, or if you get the Ford kit, you won't get this one, but I didn't read the instructions and thought I needed it, so I went ahead and ordered it, but I'm not gonna use it. So this would go on here as such, and you would pound it down onto this surface. So, um, it has a corresponding rubber seal that goes on top of it. And uh, this is eliminated from the Ford kit. And replaced with this little rubber guy, this guy here. So it does the same basic thing. Um, it's gonna seal the stub shaft. So it's gonna go Just like, like this. And this seal is, uh, our surface is gonna press on as such, but you have to overcome this metal ring in here. So you have to kind of pound it on. And you just gotta be real careful that you don't damage the, the seal surface uh, or cut it. If it does cut, then you're gonna be getting dirt into your assembly. So what me and Ralphie did is we went to Lowe's and got this little ABS fitting. Now this is a two inch fitting and um, what it's gonna let us do is uh, slide it over the top of this uh, step shaft. It's gonna fit right into the surface here of the seal and we'll be able to tap it on with a small hammer. Okay. I think we should throw some grease on there. Absolutely. surface will seal against the back side of the spindle and see how it's got flex to it it's able to ride against the um, spindle and keep all the dust and dirt out okay Can't all work. right 
it. So we're just getting ready to get the axle and put it into the housing. Um, I'm gonna reuse uh, this little seal. Uh, this is gonna go right in the end of the axle tube and just keeps everything from uh, going into the axle. So you can put it in this way. So a little grease on this seal here. Premium, premium high temp STP going in here. <laughs> yeah, anything that's rated for um, for uh, wheel bearings and it's high temp, you'll be good to go. Okay. Okay, let's get this guy in here a little bit. You're really good at that. Yeah. A lot of. More grease. Ready. Just a little bit on the splines. A little bit on the sill surface here. Put some lube on the axle shaft itself to prevent, help prevent rust anyway. That's it, he just has to work it in there. Catch those gears. Splines. Voila. Locked in? Locked in. All right. The seal with surface in here. Okay. And that's gonna go up on the back side of the spindle. So it's gonna need some grease in it. Kind of give it a good slathering. We'll put some uh, on the other surfaces too. Okay, so you got these little roller bearings in here. You gotta make sure that you pack these nice and tight. Plenty of grease in them because they will burn out if you don't. Just kind of squeeze it through the bearings into the back side of the, the race. Get it nice and packed in there. Of course, you don't want too much grease, otherwise you may not be able to get the whole thing together because it will hydraulically lock on you, so. Grease has to have some place it can go. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, so next uh, you got this little seal here. Okay, you see how it's got a little lip in there? Yep. That's gonna go into the back side of that little roller bearing. It's gonna keep the grease inside there and keep the dust inside out. Inside the cup of it. Yeah. So that's, uh, you just drop it in there. It's not any kind of a press on that one. And then behind it, you have this guy. And this has like a little chamfer to it. That's going to go toward the center of the vehicle. So since it's, this part, the studs are going to slide into the knuckle, um, that this uh, seal will be going on like this with the chamfer toward the pumpkin. Gotcha. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and put a little grease on it. I just happen to have a little bit right here on my fingertips. And in it goes. Right up against the seal inside. Okay. Next, we're going to throw the spindle in there, and this already has our seal in it. We have our packed bearing. It's ready to go, and we just have to locate the anti-lock brake sensor, and that's going to be on top. Slide that bad boy right on there. Slide around.
<laughs> easier said. Boy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's easier that way. Okay. I'm gonna throw a little grease on this surface. Inside of the flange. And just to help it get a seal. Blue's fine, actually. Snug up in there. Just like that. Right. Oh. That would help. Your nuts is in the way. <laughs> That'll help. How the hell did we get it on that? Uh, I'm going to show you guys the old school way of <laughs> packing wheel bearings. Um, where we used to do it just in our hand, which works good if you don't if you don't have a, a wheel bearing packer. So I still do it too. Yeah. Just pack them by hand. Old school, man. That's the way we did it back in the day. <clears throat> Still do it that way too. Mm -hmm. So I taught my son. I'm not gonna. That's it, man. So got your bearing. You got two bearings. You got the inner and the outer. So, um, like I said before, the races are already in this guy. We just sat it on top of this drum to show you. This, uh... Okay. So the inner is gonna drop way in there, and uh, the outer is gonna be over here. So, I'm going to do the, uh, this bigger one first on the outside, and we're going to grease it up real good and drop it in there. <laughs> so what you're going to do is put some grease in this bad boy. And how are you going to do it? Well, you got your little tub of grease, right? Um, you're just going to get your big old dollop, make sure your hands are clean. Um, he actually and... taught me this like 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and so what you're going to do is take the back side of your bearing and you're scraping the grease off your the palm of your hand into the bearing you can see it's starting to come come out of the bearing uh, roller surface and you just do that all the way around I could probably speed this part up huh? Yeah, you go all the way around. Well, no, it's important that they know to get it in that race. Sure. And then once you use all that up, some more, and you can go all the way around, and then you're going to do the front side of the bearing. Just make sure that the grease gets all the way through. And this is uh, this is critical because if you don't get the grease into the bearing all the way around, you can burn the bearing up and the bearing can lock up and then you'll be stranded. So once you get the back done, then you do it with the front. You can kind of slap it in there, it puts more pressure on the grease and gets it up further into the bearing. No air spaces at all. That's the idea. You can actually hear the air coming out of the bearing. So work yourself around. And then once you're done with that, then just go ahead and throw some of the grease across the bearing surface. Okay. Just gonna throw a little grease inside the spindle. Covering the uh, bearing race itself. Again, you're going to want to get grease in there, but not so much that um, the whole hub is packed. You just want to make sure that your surfaces are, are lubed up pretty good. And then you're going to drop the bearing in. And we got it upside down, don't we? You're going to make sure that your bearing race is. Uh, it's got grease on it 
and also this seal surface right here, you can get that greased up too. So the bearing drops in, spread it around a little bit, and then we have the seal. Okay, so uh, you'll see how you have the metal rim on the seal. That's going to go down, and that will be packed with grease also. Okay? Okay. So let's work our way around, and then we'll tap the seal in. need something flat to go across it. I'm going to get a board right now. Clean my hands. Get right back to you. Okay, so I just use a piece of, um, this is like synthetic flooring or whatever, and it's it's plenty stout to uh, do this. So I'm just going to get it, um, throw it on there, and it'll be able to drive this seal on straight, flat. all there is to it. Nice and clean install. I'm just going to throw a little grease in here. Again, just a light coat will do to make sure everything's a little lubed. Put too much on there, you'll never get this thing together. It'll uh, keep the air from evacuating. Get like a vacuum lock kind of thing going. Again, make sure that you have the port for the ABS on top, otherwise you'll be sorry. Okay. And then, front side of this guy. Some of the splines. Out of there. Just make sure your hands are clean. Yeah. You don't want to rub any dirt in there. <laughs> Definitely not. Or moisture. Yeah. Okay. Again, start with the outside of it. Work that grease in. Try not to drop the bearing too. This mm -hmm. is a really good point where you don't want to drop the bearing. <clears throat> I'm sure it's been done millions of times. <laughs> uh, might have happened to me. <laughs> not this time though. I got a really good grip on it. Famous last words. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. And watch your bearing roll across the driveway. We already greased down here in the race. Slip right in there. Or you can just put it on, which would probably be easier, and then drop your bearing. So if I'm gonna do that, make sure that your bearing is in a clean paper towel wrapped up. Again, contamination will ruin your day. Slip this guy on. Got the seal in there. Bearings packed. Work it on.
about all that there is to it. Until you <laughs> torque everything down, huh? it kind of. Yeah. Well, you just got to get that seal across that back. That's what locks it in, aside from bearings and yeah. wheel nut there. Well, it doesn't lock it in, but it has to. Be, the seal has to be on that inner okay. surface for Seated it to on seal. The, yeah. Cool. All right. And what? All right. So uh, have to get the bearings packed, and you put your seal in, and then you can put this. Uh, they call it the V rubber V seal, V lip seal, or something like that. And that's just pressed down on this uh, machine surface here. Okay, once we got that done, um, again, just um, lightly coat it with grease, not too much, or you'll have issues getting this thing together. And we don't want that. So just a little bit. Okay. Okay, because we already got grease down on this side to work together to seal all this stuff up. Then once you get that in, then we can go together. <laughs> oh. I just realized I flipped the video from vertical to... No, you wanna uh, do that one over? <clears throat> okay, so once you got this thing pushed in far enough so that the uh, ABS sensor will be right over the top of these, these little notches, then you're good to go. You, take, you can put the bearing in the front, and then we'll uh, go ahead and tight or put the nuts on the back side of the the knuckle and get everything tied together. This thing's kind of a bugger, so you just got to work the bearing in. Get it all the way back. There we go. Got it? Yep. All right. So we elected to leave off the dust cover on purpose this time. <laughs> yeah. Just because um, this is my truck and I drive down a lot of uh, rocky roads and I really don't like it when rocks get stuck between the dust cover and the brake rotor. So this is a personal choice thing. Uh, I would advise you to go ahead and put them on your truck. What kind of extensions do you got there? Uh, well, I got I got these ones. Right now, Ralphie's trying to get the nuts onto the back of this thing. Let's see if we can see. <laughs> get this in his way. Yeah. Uh, that's me right there. There's the one. That's the main one. Can you one. see it? Yep. Okay. So, uh, you got to start it with an uh, extension, 21 millimeter. Yeah. I think we might have to turn the wheel on that one. Okay. This one I'm gonna go for right here. And it was easier with the wobbler. Yeah, I don't know if we're catching any of this, so. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we kind of broke our wobbler though. We might have to go buy one. Because yeah. this is a tight, tight fit in here. Let me see if I can get it to work. Okay, so Ralphie's just snugging up the nuts real quick. And uh, be done up to a final torque of uh, 149 pounds according to Spintech. And we will use a torque wrench on that. Yeah. Oh wait, I said it for 149 negative. <laughs> Okay, so we got it uh, set at 149 pounds uh, per the instructions. 
as Ralphie going to action. Right. Using our carefully calibrated snap-on uh, torque wrench. Beauty. All right, we got those two. Good thing I wasn't doing my incessant talking. <laughs> You folks in TV land can see what's going on because I don't know if I'm aiming the camera right. Ah, there we go. <laughs> cool. Right. Um, Zoom out. That looks good. Next, we'll work on securing the hub. That's <clears throat> recording. <laughs> okay, Ralphie's getting after it with the torque wrench. Spintech instructions call for 149 pounds of torque on There's that bad boy. And all four of these uh, spindle retaining nuts, I guess you call them. Okay, and then when it comes time to put your ABS sensor back in, make sure that you have the shims on it and pop it together. Okay. All right, so you're gonna look in through your box of parts here and you're gonna find um, this little retaining nut that has the little stud on it. It's got a little pin built into it. Okay, this is what's gonna go in first and this is good going to set your initial uh, preload. So we'll uh, put this in with the pin face down. Pin face down. And then we'll thread it in. So that the pin is facing outward. Correct. You would be correct. So we'll get this bad boy started. Gotta catch, huh? Mm, yeah, you gotta line it so the teeth catch. <laughs> yeah. Just like that. Just right? like that. There we go. Fifty pounds. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take it down to fifty pounds, and then we'll put the locking ring on it. And we'll, um, after we get it locked down, then we'll put the final nut on, and we get go for our final torque of 125. 125. Mm -hmm. So there's fifty pounds there. And while you're doing this, you got keep uh, rotating the uh, hub the hub assembly and then you're gonna back it off once you get your 50 points. So once you do have your 50 pounds of, of, uh, of torque, what you're gonna do is back it off a quarter turn. So let's see. So right about there, it's a quarter. 
Now we're gonna take this off and we're gonna put the lockdown ring on it. And uh, you see how this side has a little bit of a bevel to it. And this side's flat. Flat side's gonna go against the nut and the kind of the smooth shoulder side's gonna come out toward the hub. Okay, um, you know, it's, it's got this little tooth there. It's gonna fit into the groove. It's um, on the uh, spindle here. And then you just have to line up the pin that's on this lock nut with one of these holes. So you gotta locate it, it's right about there. Slide that in. It feels like we got it. Get it on the pin? I think so. Go. Okay, so we lucked out the first try, got it on there. All right, now we're gonna put this lock nut over the top of the whole thing and then torque it down. I think it's 126 to 150 pounds, so we'll shoot for somewhere around 135. Try not to knock off your locking retainer. All right, make sure it's still on. Yeah, we're looking good. Okay. All right, set this for about 135 pounds. That'll do it. All right, time to put the locking hubs in. Take a look at these things. They're heavy duty, man. That's these things really are really cool. well built. This thing probably weighs three pounds in my hand, maybe more. It's all metal construction. To be honest with you, I think I like these better than I like the ones that I, I'm replacing. These things, uh, they're a lot simpler. The, uh, the warrants tend to fall apart once you get them out. Uh, these things look pretty, pretty darn good. Um, again, just a light film of grease on stuff will go a long ways towards making stuff last. Don't overdo it or, or you have issues getting stuff together. Okay. So... A little light coat though, keeps things from corroding. Helps them work a little bit better. I'm not gonna take the innards out of this, so I don't want springs to go everywhere. But, again, just a light coat on stuff. There we go. Okay, and here I'm just gonna slide this in, and these, um, these you kind of got to index, so just kind of feel for a uh, spot where they fit. All right, just got to gotta be patient. You got to hunt for it. Yeah, <laughs> they make you work for it. And then, um, then there's uh, two different uh, snap rings. I'm not so sure it matters which one goes in first. I believe this one will go in first, and then this, this second one is kind of a split um, ring where they're, it's kind of a helix kind of deal. And I believe this one goes on the outside.
That's better. <clears throat> Clip pliers. All right, nice. Mm. Got a circlip in there. Yeah, circlip's installed. I put a little grease on this O-ring. Get a good seal. And then on these little helix springs here. Engage nice and easy. Put a little grease on that surface down there. Okay. It's a little free position. Let's see, how's this guy doing there? Looks like there's a pin here. So I lined up with this hole right here. Like that. And then now you just pop the screws in, kind of set them staggered so that they tighten down mm. evenly. Might have a torque value, but I don't. I don't know what it is. Probably be something inch pounds. Yeah, yeah. And they're stainless, so you probably can't hurt them by tightening them up too much. Right. I should have got my little nut driver. Zipped them up with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay.
Okay, see if we can do this. I'm uh, holding the camera with my knees. <laughs> so uh, there's there's holes in the brake shoes or brake pads. You place these pins into them. Then once you get them both on, then what you do, or what I do, swing up the caliper just so it holds the shoes or the uh, pads rather from falling out and that'll let me get the top ones okay so balance everything here another one of the springs okay facing down Insert one side and then the other. Okay, now that they're both in, I'll swing the caliper all the way up and put in the pin bolt. Make sure that these slide pin heads are into the flats. Um, there's some bosses on here that you have to uh, get these things oriented on and make sure that they're lined up and torque these things down to 42 foot pounds. So if you just tighten them up, these things can go kind of cockeyed on you and you can uh, really do some damage. So make sure that they're straight before you crank them down. All that's left to do is to disconnect the brake line from the old caliper and transfer it onto the new one. Uh, but first what we need to do is an old school tip. We uh, put a piece of plastic, some kind of a plastic sheet or bag or something, over the master cylinder and screw the cap back on. That keeps it from breaking vacuum and losing all your fluid. So, <laughs> in this case, we're going to use a rubber glove. All right. Oop. Go. Get on there. There we go. Now, this won't keep all your fluid from leaking out, but it'll slow it down quite a bit. All right. Cool. you get the line on I'm um, just gonna I topped off the uh, reservoir and now I'm just gonna bench bleed it get the air out of here and the fluid will chase it out 